starting just a tad bit late. Oh. Um, we have Dr. Christine here who's going to tackle us about how to clean, eat clean and healthy so we make sure that we're having strong hearts. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure you raise your hand so therefore we can make sure your questions are answered properly. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so like she said, and I'm not a physician, I'm not a doctor. Um, my background is I'm an exercise physiologist and a registered dietitian. So I'm the director of the Strong Hearts Cardiac Rehab. So just a little bit about what we do. We've been around three years. So anybody that has had a heart attack, a stent, open heart surgery, um, we rehab them. Like I always say, if you have your knee sur you know, surgery or your hip replaced, you go to therapy. Well, your heart's a muscle. If you have a heart attack, you have surgery on it, it's damaged. We have to exercise it back to health, right? So you can get back to your quality of life. Um, you know, it's not all old people. I had a 30-year-old marathon runner, thin guy. He had quadruple bypass. His muscles were saying, let's go, let's go. He kept wanting to run on the treadmill, and then we're watching his rhythm and his heart rate, you know, and his heart saying, oh, no, I can't handle all that yet, you know, so it's titrating it up. Um, and then another cool thing what we do at Cardiac Rehab is teach our patients how to eat. You know, with heart disease, we always say food is medicine. Um, so there's a lot of things that we're in control of that affect our health. So we do that. Um, there's a dietitian, and then we also have chefs that actually teach them how to cook and prepare the meals. So kind of decreasing the sodium and the fat and everything. So today is just kind of general healthy eating. Stop me anytime. This is a small crowd, um, and we can. I want to answer all your questions. Is there any just pressing to start with? Like just off the. We're kind of away from New Year's resolutions. That was the big one in January. Everybody was drilling me with all. Yeah, everybody's already. Drop those, <laughs> giving up. Anybody doing Lent? I said, Jesus is going to help me stop sugar for Lent. He helped me get fine this year. That's what I say. I'm trying. Day what, two I'm on? So does what I eat and drink really affect my health? Yeah, yeah right? But we still do it. So I always say, you know, like if you have a Ferrari, you know, you're not going to put the cheap gas in it, right? I have an old 07 Envoy, beat up, old car. That's the cheap gas. But if you have a fast car, like a good car, you want to put the best fuel in. Well, food is fuel for our bodies, okay? So it's, it's what we need so we can eat, think, you know, move, do all the things we enjoy. Unfortunately, though, we go to food for our joy, right, a lot of times. Yeah. So, um, so in order to perform kind of at optimal level, you need the best fuel in your car, the best fuel in your tank. We tell athletes this all the time. Um, Every time you eat or drink, you know, you're feeding or you're fighting disease. So we don't think about that. Everybody knows like cancer cells feed on the sugar, right? If we eat a lot of sugar. Um, if you eat, it's, it doesn't matter if you eat high sugar, that doesn't cause diabetes, but it can contribute because it's a lot of calories. So if we look at it that way, you know, Diet Coke, I'm a Diet Coke addict. It wipes out all the good stuff in your stomach that helps you digest food and all the bacteria. You know, that's why you take probiotics. Well, then if you drink Diet Coke, you just wipe all that out. Okay, so then your immunity goes down and you can't fight things as well. So every time we eat, and I don't think we look at food like that. So at the heart hospital, we have an organic garden now, we have the food truck. Even the way we prepare the foods, like sauteing versus another way, we can release things and get kind of more nutrients to be active to help repair and heal your body. So we actually do use food to heal at the heart hospital and in cardiac rehab. So there's a lot of risk factors for heart disease and there's a lot of things that you can do. So high blood pressure, you know, a lot of us genetically, maybe it runs in the family along with diabetes and things, but in a company I used to work for, we'd say, you know, genetic loads the gun and lifestyle pulls the trigger, okay? So even though you're genetically predispositioned, you can do some things to maybe not pull that trigger to get the diabetes, to get the blood pressure to be uncontrolled and so high you have to take medications. Physical inactivity, we all know we should take the stairs instead of the elevator. We all know we should move every hour, you know, not sit at our desk all day. Stress, that's a hard one, you know? I mean, we have guys, high stress jobs, they come in because they have a heart attack. So we don't realize sometimes the stress that can be put on your body. We actually had a lady too that, um, there's actually a thing called broken heart syndrome. So her daughter passed away and the stress of that caused her heart to go into failure. Yeah, and then they recover usually pretty well with exercise and stuff, but, but again, just that stressor, which is, uh, you know, like grieving as a stressor, not just like a high stress job. Smoking, we know they say if you quit tobacco, that's the number one best thing you can do for your health, to turn your health around. Obesity and then diabetes. So how do you eat healthy? I love it when people ask me this. What's that mean, eating healthy? Not processed foods. Not processed foods, yeah. What else? Eating to maintain your life. Yeah. 
Yeah, so eating for health instead of just, you know, yeah. So it means a lot of different things. I always say, we don't have to go organic and tofu overnight, right? So you can mix your peas and corn, you know, just don't call it, I think everybody when they think of healthy food, just don't call it porn, yeah. So, you know, everybody thinks, oh, you're gonna make me eat cardboard. It's gonna taste awful, you know, healthy food. It's disgusting, it's a punishment. But it doesn't really have to be that way. And it doesn't have to be so hard. Nutrition is so complicated. The easiest way to eat healthy is just eat real food. It's in its most natural form, okay? So, like you say, the less processed. I love it when I go to classes and they're like, well, what about this? What about this? Reading the labels. Oh, this one has rice flour, this one. And I'm like, just don't eat anything with a label. <laughs> Then we're done, you know? Fruit, produce, vegetables, lean meats. Just quit reading the labels. If it's frustrating, then just get out of that aisle and leave it alone. And then you're getting away from the processed foods. So a heart healthy diet, and this is basically for diabetes, for just being healthy, we want a lot of fiber. So a lot of fruits and vegetables, we always say eat the rainbow. Um, if you're a picky eater, if there's vegetables that you don't like, your family doesn't like, there's a cookbook, I think it's funny, it says how to like cheat on your husband in the kitchen. It's called Sneaky Chef. So that's when you like puree the broccoli and you sneak it in the meatloaf and the, like the family never knows. So you can still get those nutrients without eating, you know, crunchy gross broccoli or whatever. Um, choose whole grains. We always know brown rice and white rice, right? So white rice is just the whole is stripped off the brown rice. So when you do that, you take all the B vitamins away and the fiber. Fiber is going to, one, make you feel fuller longer. It's going to help stabilize your blood sugars. That fiber goes in there. I can increase somebody's fiber and sometimes lower their cholesterol without medication. Fiber goes in there and grabs onto that plaque in your arteries and helps kind of scrape it out. Um, and then it also helps with like colon cancers and some of the stomach cancers and stuff because it's that bulky stuff. So you get that with the fruits and the vegetables and the whole grains. Protein rich foods. You know, we all know, don't eat the skin on the chicken and little things like that. Some low fat dairy sources. And then the flavor without fat, sugar, salt. I always say here in America, there are so many spices and herbs and things we can use, but what do we do? Oh, this needs a little more sugar. This needs a little more salt. Let me put some more butter on this. When y'all go, do y'all go to eat a hibachi? Mm -hmm. And then we ask for the extra scoop of butter on our rice after they cook it and it's on our plate, yeah. But that's what we always go to. So it's really kind of getting creative and trying to get away from those three things and getting creative like, I always add more garlic, you know, that's always my go-to. So we talk about foods in their natural form. You can see maybe that's what it looked like back in the day, a salad, everything's natural. Bread's a little processed and then you get to Cheetos. Like, I don't even know Cheetos are even food anymore, really, right? <laughs> My guy, I always say, he, uh, he loves honey buns. Loves honey buns. Like my mom wraps up a big jumbo box under the tree for him for Christmas. And I'm like, Jackson, you know, sometimes when we're running late, we have gas station breakfast before school. You know, and he gets honey buns and a soda. Like, he's not gonna think well that day at all. It's gonna be a bad day. But it's like, I don't even know if that honey bun is food. And it was probably made five years ago and it's in the package. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like just to keep it shelf stable. Like, is it even food at this point? I'm not sure. I worked at a Michigan State University and um, I had athletes, I was the dietitian for the athletes and the basketball player, he'd eat so many Cheetos, his fingers were always stained orange. So everybody's like, you don't need to eat that. He's a lean division one athlete, you know, he's fine. So I was like, let's just put some good stuff with the Cheetos. You know, so you can have it every now and then, you know, your kids can have it, but you've got to make sure you get some nutrients in there too, not just processed, whatever, chemicals all the time. So switching the whole grains, I know everybody thinks oatmeal and brown rice are typically, or whole wheat, but there's a bunch of them out there. Like who eats buckwheat, right? Who's tried it? You know, barley's kind of neat. Quinoa up there, the third one on the top. Yeah, so you can make it like rice, you can make it like a breakfast cereal. The cool thing about the quinoa is it has every amino acid you need, every protein you need. So it's gonna help build your muscle. It's kind of, it's equivalent to like a meat and stuff. Um, the bulgur, the black rice, I don't know, I don't do a lot of those. So the whole point is, like, there's a lot of whole grains out there, so we don't just, if you don't like oatmeal, don't eat oatmeal. Let's try something else. There's plenty of recipes, it's easy to do. Oh, oh. Oops, sorry guys. Oh no, now it, can I just hit? What do I do? <laughs> sorry guys. Oh, shoot, so just wait, okay, there we go. Fiber, does anybody track their fiber? No, yeah, so when people come to me like, how should I eat, how do I lose weight, how do I get healthy? Let's start tracking fiber. 
So again, you're gonna eat less if your fiber gets up. It's recommended to get 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day. If you are not, you have to be very intentional to get this much fiber in your diet. You really have to pay attention. But if you focus on this, that mid-afternoon, hey, I'm gonna hit the vending, get my Snickers, you're like, oh, I really should get an apple. Or I really should go get, you know, something whole grain or something to get the fiber up. Um, if you're not really paying attention to fruits and vegetables and all of that right now, I highly recommend you titrate it up slowly. Okay, your fiber up. But it's gonna make you feel fuller longer, you're gonna get more nutrients, um, and it's gonna help with everything in your digestive tract. So getting your protein, is anybody in here worried about that? No. Yeah, in America we eat enough protein, right? <laughs> Very much so. So, you know, I know like, especially down here, we think we need meat all the time, but the whole point of this slide is that there's protein in a lot of different vegetables. You know, there's other sources. Broccoli has some protein in it, the rice. You know, there's other sources that have protein. So you don't always have to have the big, the big meat. Um, what we teach the cardiac patients is red meat once a month, four ounces of red meat once a month, okay? Because it tends to be higher in fat and that saturated fat, which is gonna clog up their arteries. So we do a lot more fish or chicken or lean meat. And then a lot of times we actually try to teach the patients to even have just some plant-based. You know, maybe they don't have meat at that meal, you know, but they're just having all the vegetables and fruits and stuff. So when I moved down here from Michigan, I was like, oh, that's a cool job. I'll take the job, you know, but like, nobody's gonna do this in Arkansas. Nobody's not gonna eat meat and bacon and stuff with every meal. And the thing is, they're doing it. The patients are doing it, and you know why? Because they feel better. I mean, we had a patient, in 12 weeks, he lost 56 pounds with us, um, he got off all of his insulin, and he got his CDL license back, and he was able to drive, and he hadn't worked in five years because of his health. So it's like, just exercise and food. I mean, it totally changed. Yeah, yeah, it happens every day, every day. So you feel better, you start getting off those meds, put money back in your pocket too, you know, so it's worth it because food is medicine. So heart healthy fats, it's kind of where I go back to that honey bun thing. So if they're liquid at room temperature, they're a good fat. Avocados I know are solid, but you want the salmon, the almonds, the olive oil, that's the best one. Those are going to be the best ones. Butter, the heavy creams, they kind of start clogging up your arteries a little bit more. And then when you get these trans fats and these hydrogenated, these are when they change the chemicals in the fat to make it shelf stable. So the honey bun can be there five years in that package. Okay, those are the ones that are the most dangerous. So like I always tell my kids and stuff, when you make bacon, you know, and the fat turns to white and it's in the pan, it looks exactly the same way in your arteries. So we can, they do ultrasounds on carotids when people have strokes. So these big vessels to your brain will get kind of narrow because they're getting starting to get clogged off. Well, then you have plaque in your other arteries. So you have high blood pressure. Your pressure's beating against your artery walls. It breaks off a piece of that plaque. It floats upstream. This is narrow. That clot comes, and then you have a stroke. Okay? So these right here. So they'll do, they'll cut, and they'll do, and they'll pull it out, and it'll look like a little white worm, like a worm of bacon fat out of your arteries. So if it looks like that in the pan, it looks, I mean, we don't put it down the drain in our sink, right? So why would we put it in our bodies? It's the same thing. We always say it at the heart hospital, we have, car, you know, we have plumbers and electricians. The electricians help with the rhythm of your heart where they shock you back into rhythm and stuff. And the plumbers are cleaning out all those pipes. So you gotta think about that. And it's a good thing to teach you know, the kiddos too. Oh gosh, I did it again, guys, sorry. Go, oh, there we go. So what about salt? Mm. Yeah, it's addictive. People are addicted to salt. My 12 year old already, this needs a little more salt. This needs, and I hate that. I hate that he already wants it. So the thing with salt, there's all kinds. Salt is salt. If you have renal failure, there is a different kind of salt that you use. But if you have high blood pressure, it doesn't matter which one of these salts you use, it's gonna cause your blood pressure to go up, okay? Salt attracts that water. So think about your pipes in your house. You have the water on, you have the water on. Those pipes can handle, I know nothing about plumbing. I always say 30 pounds of pressure. So now let's say we put, we're flooding it. We got a big hose in that pipe and we're putting 50 pounds of pressure. What's going to happen? It's going to blow. Yeah, it's going to blow. Yeah. So that's what happens. And when your blood pressure is high like that and you have all that fluid and it's beating against those vessel walls, they get real hard and stiff. You want them to kind of flex with every heartbeat like this. Then they get stiff. And that's when you start getting heart disease and that plaque starts plaquing up on them and stuff. Um, our chef, he went to the doc, he had high blood pressure, they wanted to do him on meds, and he's like, I can do this with my diet. So he changed his diet up, he was on two blood pressure meds, 
he was doing all right. And then he really adopted when he started working in the cardiac rehab, the kind of the Pritikin thing and really got serious. And I mean, he's a strict vegetarian now, but on his birthday, every year on his birthday, he'll get a bucket of chicken and drink scotch, right? He put on 10 pounds of fluid in 12 hours, 10 pounds. He's puffy, his eyes. I mean, that can put you in a heart failure and into the hospital real quick. So the same thing happens. We always tell our patients like Thanksgiving, like don't lose your mind because we have people coming back because they get fluid overload. They get too much fluid. The pressure's too high. It's too much for their heart to handle. So it just shows you that's just the food that he, you know, so it's, it's very, it's very neat that our patients, you know, if they even adopt the diet a little bit, if they just cut out the processed foods and exercise, you know, we're walking them. It's not like crawling out of the gym, dripping with sweat, you know, killer workouts, just kind of a medium workout with cutting out the processed foods. After two weeks, we're pulling off their blood pressure medications because their blood pressure is getting too low. And all the, the only change was the lifestyle and the food. So it's really easy to do. And then let me backpedal on that. There is a genetic thing. I have a 23 year old slim young boy that works for me and he has to take blood pressure meds and he's completely vegan now. I mean, he does everything right, but he still has to take a med just because genetically he has high blood pressure. So there are some of those, but at least he's not on a lot. At least he's doing everything he can, you know, to help it. So the Pritikin way, you can see half the plate is vegetables, all the colors. We have a little bit of a lean meat, some low, uh, low fat dairy, some fruit, and then our whole grain up there, the starchy vegetables. So this is how we recommend everybody eat. So it's still a large quantity. What we teach, there's no calorie counting, there's no portion control. It's just eating the foods in their most natural form. And when you do that, fruits and vegetables are not high in calorie. Your calories automatically go down and your fiber goes up. So the nutrition facts label, I don't know if anybody noticed, but they've changed. The one on the right is the new one. So what we always say is you want you know, the most square footage for the lowest price, like you do in your house. So we look at like the one on the right, the 55 grams, we want the calories to be less than 55. So here, you're only getting 55 grams. You're only getting two thirds cup of food. That's not very much food for 230 calories. So you're getting a little small expensive house. <laughs> That's what that is. So if you just look at the food label, you want the size of it. You want the calories to be less than the size. So like, I, again, I always think square footage of the house. I want a big house for a low cost, okay? This one is not a good choice to choose because you're not gonna eat very much and you're gonna have half of your calories for your meal. So and just looking for things less than 55 grams? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. yep. So the calories should be less than 55 grams on this. But if you look at another label and it's 100 grams, you would just want the calories to be under 100. But then hopefully if it's 100 grams, it's a bigger serving, clearly. So eat this, not that. So seven wings and three celery stalks. You have 555 calories, 20 grams of refined carbs, or you just do three wings, still go watch the game, still go to the bar and hang with your friends, eat your wings and more celery, and you cut your calories in half, okay? And then look at the one on the right, the burger, the fries, the milkshake, 1,800 calories. I mean, that's what you need in a whole day. Or you can eat all of the other food, the peppers, the fruit, whatever. There's no way I could eat all that food in one sitting, right? So we talk about uh, calorie density a lot at our job and with our patients and stuff. So we want the fruits, the vegetables that are low calorie. You don't want the little, you know, like a honey bun is a small amount of food and a lot, a lot of calories. We want low calorie density, okay? And that's what all those foods are on the right or even the more celery sticks. So there's just a few changes you can make. You know, I always say, get the apples when you get the burger at McDonald's or whatever. Just cut out the fries or get the small fry instead of the large fry. All of that helps. All of those little things help. So if you change your diet, if you do some of the things, you can reduce your total cholesterol and your LDL. Triglycerides. Triglycerides, they're, they're affected by exactly what you eat. So if I had that burger and fries and milkshake already today, my triglycerides would be up. And then hopefully my body would regulate and bring them back down. Triglycerides, when they're high, they're high from a high fat diet, high sugar, and if you have uncontrolled diabetes, usually your triglycerides are high and then high alcohol intake. So when you do that, there's fat in the blood. So the fat, you know, your blood should be like liquid, easy for your heart to pump. When your triglycerides are high, it's like sludge. So think about bad oil in a car. It's like sludge. So it's so hard for your heart 
to pump. So then that's when you get the hypertrophy and you start going into heart failure and stuff. So if you just think about that, like sometimes you don't want to want to have that high fat meal because then of what it's going to do to your heart. So clearly if you eat lower fat, it'll go down. Lower insulin levels. So how diabetes is caused, type two, is, is actually from body fat. So you have a thing, your pancreas secretes insulin. So I'm making this up. You eat an apple, your body goes, hey, I need two insulin. Your pancreas squirts out two insulin, they float around, they unlock the door to let that, you know, your apple turns into glucose. They come unlock the door to let that glucose into your brain, into your muscles, so you can think, dance, move, do what you wanna do. So then when you start getting insulin resistant, like pre-diabetes, now you eat the apple and it goes, pancreas has to kick out 10 insulin to let that glucose, because there's body fat blocking the door. So now we need more insulin to unlock that door to let that glucose from your bloodstream into your muscles, okay? So when you check somebody's blood sugar and it's high, that's because it hasn't gotten into the muscles and brain yet because there's too much blocking the door. So eventually what happens, your, your pancreas goes, forget you, you've worked me to death, I'm done, I'm tapped out, and it quits. All the beta cells, you've ruined all the beta cells in your pancreas, and that's when you start giving yourself insulin shots, okay? It's done. So that's the progression of it. So if you lose some of the body fat, exercise, exercise will burn off that glucose in your bloodstream, start backing that up, you can kind of save your pancreas and kind of back up that diabetes and getting it. So if you eat healthy and you don't eat all that sugar and stuff and get all that sugar in your bloodstream, your insulin won't go so high so your pancreas won't have to work so hard. Does that make sense? Yeah. Metabolic syndrome, we know that's the triad. And then lower blood pressure, which we talked about. Drink more water. How do you know when you're hydrated? Pinch your skin, yeah? What's another way? Yeah, your urine is light. It's gross to talk about, but that's the best way. Clear to pale yellow, even first thing in the morning. Even your babies in the diapers, even your toddlers. Clear to pale yellow. If it's like apple juice or darker, you are, you're dehydrated. When you're 2% dehydrated, your performance goes down by 30%. So we used to tell athletes, that's between first and sixth place, like in a sprint, you know, in a track meet or something, or on a test. Like you're gonna go from 100 to a 70% on a test just because of water. You know, like I've had very little water today. I've had two Diet Mountain Dews because I'm tired today. So I'm super dehydrated right now. But some people need more water than others. So it's best to go by your urine color. The recommendation though is half of your body weight in ounces. Okay, so if you weigh 200 pounds, you need 100 ounces of water a day minimum. Okay, down here in the hot and the humid, you may need a little more if you're active and if you exercise. Um, you know, of course, I'm a dietitian, so I have my kids completely jaded, <laughs> their minds. So my little guy will be like, Mom, it's Lello, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, go drink more water. <laughs> you know, and he always says, I want it to be white. I want it to be white. And I'm like, no, that's, that's the toilet. <laughs> you know, we don't pee white, but <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so if you're super, super thirsty, you're already, already dehydrated. dehydrated. Yep, you're already dehydrated if you're thirsty. Yep. Yep. So like when I used to work with athletes, you know, they'd be like, I'm thirsty. I'm like, oh, well, we're losing now. <laughs> you know, our performance is already down, <laughs> you know. <laughs> they say with basketball players, I always say everybody, but Shaq, at the end of the game, when they start missing free throws, it's actually because of dehydration. Because their brain, they can't function as well at the fourth quarter because of dehydration. Yeah. Yep. So it's the easiest thing, you know, and I'm sure you guys have heard that mid-afternoon lull when you get tired and you think you need food and you want to hit the vending. It's usually we're dehydrated, especially if you had the burger and fries at lunch. All that salt is really going to make you, or all the caffeine like I've had today is really going to dehydrate you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because it's a diuretic. It'll help you, it'll make you pee more. So I always say if you do drink a lot of caffeine, you know, tea, coffee, soda, whatever, do a one-to-one. -one. That's what I try to do. If I have a soda, so at restaurants, I always get Diet Coke and water, you know? And I drink a one-to-one -one the whole time, so. All right, I should eat six small meals a day. Do you guys remember when this was popular? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the theory with that is you eat a little bit, your blood sugar comes up, it kind of levels out, and you don't get those big valleys. Then you eat a little bit, so you kind of stabilize your metabolism. The problem is, everybody was eating six meals a day. You know, it shouldn't be six big meals a day. Yeah. So we talk about mindful eating. Eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. You know, who eats when they're bored? Who eats when they're mad at their husband? Who eats when they're stressed at work? <laughs> who eats just because the commercial popped up, now you think you want Oreos? You know what I mean? I love it when I say, you know, like, what do we do? 
me, I'm old, you know, dinner and a movie, right? Let's go on a date, dinner and a movie. So you go eat at Outback, let's say, and then you go to the movie, and what do you do? Get popcorn. Get popcorn. You're not hungry. There's no way you're hungry. But it's those associations. Us, I always make this buffalo chicken dip when Michigan State's playing, when we watch the game. So, I mean, every time they play it, my kids are like, where's the dip? I mean, we could have just eaten dinner, and then we're, here we are eating, you know, this cheese dip stuff. So, mindful eating. You know, food is the most abused anxiety drug, and then the exercise is the most underutilized antidepressant. So it's so neat. With heart disease, depression's huge, you know? I mean, they just kiss death, is what I say. That's scary. Life is changing. You got your chest cut open. You know, now you got to eat different. You're on meds or whatever. Depression is huge. We just get them moving. We just get them exercising, and the depression lifts, and then they can heal. They heal so much better when that depression lifts. So, and, you know, and a lot of people do stress eat, and then you do that. You zone out and you eat the whole bag of chips and you're stressed, yeah. I had a lady, a patient in Georgia, she'd, she'd lay in bed and eat chocolate. She said, it loves me back. And I'm like, no, darling, it's actually killing you. <laughs> you know, her husband was a truck driver, he'd be gone, so she'd eat chocolate in bed, yeah, yeah. So do you know when you're hungry? Do you know when your body's telling you hungry? Physically, versus just mindful. Stomach growls, yeah, yeah, I get a headache. That's my cue. Yeah, I get hangry, you get grouchy. Have y'all had kids? Like, you know, when I was a new mom, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're like possessed. Like you're demonic right now. And I'm like, oh, that's hunger. <laughs> you just feed them and then you're like, there you are. Now we're back, you know? It's, they get hungry, they get so crazy, yeah. Yeah, you know, or how many of you, you know, we have a break room, so you eat breakfast, get to work, you walk in, there's donuts sitting there. Who grabs one? Yeah. We're not hungry. So sometimes we eat just because it's there. You know, so try to think about, I always say, we're not in Paris, France, right? It's not the trip of the lifetime. It's not our only chance to get that Krispy Kreme donut. They're 70 cents. You can get it tomorrow. You can get it. They're always going to be there. <laughs> we can always go get another Oreo or another Krispy Kreme or, you know, so just if your body's telling you you're full, stop and really pay attention to, is my body hungry right now? I've had patients before, they go, I eat dinner at 6 o'clock. And I go, well, are you hungry at 6 o'clock? Well, I eat dinner at 6 o'clock. <laughs> but are you hungry at 6 o'clock? I've had patients that eat to make sure they don't get hungry. You know? And I'm like, okay, well. <laughs> you know, when you overeat, when you go past what your body's telling you, it's kind of like standing at the gas tank. The tank's full, and you're still pumping gas, and it's spewing out. You would never do that. That makes no sense. So when we overeat, your body goes, my tank's full. Oh, you're giving me more? All right, let me store it. And that second storage tank of gas is the body fat. That's just stored energy waiting to be used from eating too many, too much energy, getting too much gas, if you will. I always say babies, you know, breastfed babies, they, they, they eat when they're hungry and they stop when you're full and you have no idea how much they ate, right? So bottle fed, we make the bottle, you eat six ounces at three o'clock and the baby's turning their head and it's spewing out and we're still trying to get it to eat. And clearly the baby's telling you, I'm full, like stop this, you know? So. We're designed to eat when we're hungry and stop when we're full, but then we kind of override that for whatever reason. So it's kind of getting back to those physiological cues. Um, I rarely eat dinner. I'm just not hungry at night, but breakfast and lunch, like it's on for me. Like I eat at those meals. But at nighttime, I'm just not that hungry. So I sit down with my kids, but I won't always eat. I won't eat the big meal and stuff. So it's just paying attention to kind of how you work, how you function, what your body is actually telling you. So mindful questions, you know, do you stop eating when you're full? Don't pick at your food. How many times we got one bite, we take it, we're chewing, and we got the next bite going. I mean, it's ready, right? We're just, you know, it's kind of like slow down, try to enjoy it. I always eat at my desk working. That's a big no-no, you know. Try to kind of pay attention to what you're doing and don't kind of zone out and eat the whole bag of chips. Um, don't multitask, but I mean, how can you not do that? So there's a scale that we use. So you kind of want to hover between three and eight. Well, three and seven, really. You kind of want to stay in the middle. You get a little bit hungry and you eat. You know, you don't wait till you're starving and then you don't swing all the way to overeating. If I skip breakfast, I go to this one place and I get this pizza and I'll eat the whole thing and then I'm miserable the rest of the day. But I'm so hungry and I'm so hangry and I'm just shoveling it in, you know what I mean? And then I always overeat if I skip that breakfast meal, which most people do. Don't grocery shop when you're hungry. We, you know, we all know the tricks. Yeah, I open the bag while I'm still grocery shopping, eating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously. So, you know, you wanna say you get a little bit hungry and then you stop when you're full and then you wait till you get a little bit hungry again 
And then, and it's gonna change. It's gonna change with the kids. They hit growth spurts. My kids will eat like maniacs for three or four days. And the next few days, they're like, eh, eh. They just don't eat as much as they did before. And it just kind of goes like this. And we can kind of be that way too, you know, with hormones or activity. So just listen to your body. Don't reward, you are not a dog. <laughs> How many times do we do this? Do not reward, I deserve this. I deserve this chocolate cake. I, I'm like, it's chocolate cake. You know, we won the ball game. We go get ice cream, things like that. Like food is food. Food is fuel. Are we supposed to enjoy it? Of course you enjoy it, but it's, it shouldn't always be the reward. Um, again, I'm a jaded dietitian. So when I coach my little kiddos teams, you know, the, like, the good moms, do you want me to do the snack list? <laughs> you know, it's like four year old t-ball at 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning. And then they bring snacks. I mean, all the kid did was play in the dirt and pick his nose. Like he didn't even sweat. <laughs> and then he gets out of there and he just had breakfast. And then he gets Gatorade and a snack after the game, you know? But like the treat is playing t-ball. The treat is the soccer game. That's the fun. But nowadays, sometimes the kids, you know, we play for the snack at the end. So how do you eat healthy on a budget? You guys, yeah, it's hard, right? I know, I bought a banana in the cafeteria at work the other day and it was 80 cents, one banana. I was like, my goodness, I can get a whole bunch for this, you know? Um, so what I do is I have to do freezer meals. I'm single mom, two kids. I have to cook on Sunday for the week or sometimes I cook early and stock up my deep freezer. So if I'm making lasagna, I make three plant pans of it. You know, I cook in bulk, so it's all frozen. So I just come home, throw it in the oven and dinner will be done. Otherwise, they're starving and then we're driving through Popeyes or somewhere, or Burger King to get dinner because I don't have anything ready at home. So plan out your meals, prep for the week, cook in bulk and freeze it. Um, stock up when on sale. I do try to do that. I'm a Sam's junkie. Don't buy processed foods. You know, chips, I hate buying chips. They're expensive. That little bag, it's like $4. And my kids eat it like, boop. I mean, it's gone the day I bring it home from the grocery store. I get so mad. You know how much food I could get for $4? You know how much brown rice and beans and good stuff you can get for $4? Like that junk food is, that sugar cereal, Lucky Charms, they'll eat the whole box. It drives me nuts, yeah. So, and then the decreased food waste, we do that at work, but I have chefs, you know. So they cut up all their vegetables and then they boil it all down and make broth and freeze it. It's a good thing to do, but I don't do that either. So there's a lot of thing online. So there's, this is just a snapshot of like Pinterest, these freezer meals. So when you go to one of these things, it'll say like these t like 110 crock pot meals, it'll give you your grocery list. It'll give you how to do it, you know, brown five pounds of ground beef. And then you take one pound and put it in this meal and one in this. So you may spend three or four hours in the kitchen, but now you have 15 meals that are ready for the month. So this is what I do. And we actually started doing it at work for our employees. Um, we'll make five freezer meals a month. So they come and we just have stations set up and they prepare it. So some of it's just in a gallon bag that you just dump in the crock pot and it's done. Some are in tins that they just throw in the oven. And they just go table to table. And the other day, because we're doing all the shopping and we have it all set out, but I mean, the one group, 20 minutes, they were walking out with five meals ready for their family. So it really helps, it's really easy. You know, when you do it at home, when you're one person, it takes a little bit more time, but if that works for you, it does, it helps me a lot on my budget, <laughs> on the food budget, but also just to feed my kids better food. And then there's some of these once a month meals and these emails. So they'll send you, here are your recipes for the week, here's your pantry list, here's your grocery list, here are the instructions, there you go. It's all laid out for you. The emails is like a subscription, a monthly, but there's like a group on for it typically, you can find one, so it's not very costly. Who in here exercises? I don't have time to exercise. Yeah, you do, have, yeah, good, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, in my opinion, if you're a working adult, I mean, it's never convenient. It's never convenient to exercise, right? It's not convenient to pack your bag. It's not convenient to go at lunch and re-shower and get ready. It's not convenient to go after work and leave your kids in daycare another hour. It's not convenient, I have to go in the morning. I leave my kids sleeping. I was hoping there weren't cops in here because I really don't know if it's legal, but I leave them sleeping in the morning. <laughs> they're 12 and seven, <laughs> but I go at five in the morning while they're sleeping. And then I come back and then I wake them up and then I take them to school and do breakfast and stuff, you know, but that's the only time I can get it in. You know, it's awful. It's rainy and it's cold and it's dark and I don't like going at five in the morning, but that's, that's just what I have to do, you know? So it's either, it's either a priority or it's not. I always say our old uh, chief operating officer, you know, I mean, he has a stay-at-home wife and he has four kids and I mean, 
he's the big wig at the heart hospital, right? But he would go at 4.30 in the morning. Like, that's not convenient. And you think, he has everything. He could probably have a gym at his house or whatever, you know? But it was that important to him. That was the only time he could get it in was at 4.30 in the morning. So it's either, either you do it or you don't. I mean, everybody always says, you know, I don't have 30 minutes. But how often do we sit down at home and go through Facebook or just scroll through aimlessly on our phone for 30 minutes? Yeah. So I say, just do that on the bike. <laughs> scroll through Facebook on the bike, you know? Or just name your dog five miles, right? Yeah. So you just got to get it in however you can. <laughs> so really to eating healthy and eating clean and living a healthier lifestyle, just keep it simple. There's so much out there that I think can overwhelm you, that can confuse you. Um, just move. Ten minutes here, take the stairs, park further away. All of that helps. The, the goal for the exercise is 30 minutes a day, but it can be cumulative. So you can do five minutes in the morning, five minutes on break, five minutes at lunch. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes all at one time. I always say, and do what feels good, kinda. Do what you enjoy. But we always say, if taking the stairs hurts, or, you know, or is hard, that probably means you need to take more stairs, <laughs> right? <laughs> so kinda challenge yourself. Um, prioritize, plan, and prepare. Choose foods in their most natural form. Water, 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 more water. Um, don't stuff, don't starve. And then we always say, you know, it's progress, not perfection. Again, we don't have to go organic and tofu over, over, every night. So if it's just, I'm going to eat two more servings of vegetables today, or I'm going to get the burger without the fries this week, or all of those little baby steps will eventually help your health and how you feel. And then at the end, I, we do grocery store tours. These are open to the community, open to the public. Just show up. Our dietitian walks up and down the aisles with you, answer all your questions, kind of show you the best choices to make. We have grocery lists that we've already prepared. So when you're looking at kidney beans, you don't have to pick which ones are low sodium, which ones, well, we just go pick that one. <laughs> we already have it laid out for you. So you don't have to read all the labels for that. At Whole Foods, it's kind of fun because they, if you go, how many of you have bought the healthy food and it's expensive and then it's awful and tastes disgusting? Yeah. So the cool thing about Whole Foods is you go, well, what does that veggie stick taste like? We just, we open it and you can try it. Yeah. So that one's kind of a fun one to go to and tell anybody that you know or that you think might be interested. So any questions? Yes, ma'am. So what do you think about the keto diet? I know it has like unhealthy stuff in there like bacon, so what, what's your opinion? So the keto diet, the whole, um, the whole theory behind it is to kind of kick you into ketosis. So you eat very low carb, very high protein. But the problem is then you don't have very much glucose in your bloodstream, which people think is good, but you need the glucose for your brain. Okay, so let me back up. So dietitians, no, we don't really ever support keto. We don't support eliminating any food group at all. Some people feel really good on it though. And then some people feel awful. I feel awful on it. You know, and I don't think it really works. But some people actually, they say they can think more clearly when they do it, where I get hazy, you know. Um, the thing that concerns me or us, I should say, as dietitians is because it is, it can be so high in fat. Yeah. Because people eat sausage and bacon and processed meat and stuff. Yeah. What, what, what do you think about intermediate fasting? Yeah. So, again, it, people swear by it. For me, anytime I skip breakfast, I'm doing that. I was going over 16 hours without food, you know, or whatever. I feel awful, awful, awful. So other people, yeah, they feel like it, it kind of gives them more energy. They can think more clearly. Um, I just always recommend everybody just try it. Try it, yeah. Does it work for you or have you tried it? I, I tried it, but I, I, last long I was hungry and I wanted food. Yeah. Just eat when you get hungry and then stop. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's all these things out there. At our heart hospital, like our administration, they're like all about that and keto. And then all of us dietitians are like, no, <laughs> stop the madness, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, and then another thing with keto too is you're not getting all those nutrients from the vegetables and the fruits and stuff. You need vitamins, you need minerals, you want your hair to grow, you don't want it to fall out, you, you, know, you don't want to become deficient in things, so. Yeah. Any other questions? Personally, what do you normally eat for like breakfast? 
Well, since Jesus helped me get fine with my no sugar right now, I cut out the pancakes for the last two days. So today, <laughs> I was doing pancakes with peanut butter and just in syrup and eggs. Um, but again, I work out in the morning, so I'm starving at breakfast time by the time I get there, and I drink milk. So this morning I did an omelet. It was spinach and tomato and an omelet, and I had a muffin and milk, and I didn't work out today, but so be it. Yeah. I just find it a challenge <laughs> to find something that's easy and quick. Like boiled eggs. Boiled eggs. So you can do, if you look on those freezer meals, I used to make breakfast sandwiches. So it'd be the English muffin, and I'd make them and wrap them and freeze them. So then you just pull them out, nuke it for 30 seconds, and boom, you're out the door. I do that for my kids. You know, you, and you can you do the eggs in like the little muffin tin. Yeah. Yeah. They might be a little rubbery. If you're a pickery eater, you know, they're like, oh. But I mean, my gosh. It's better than driving through McDonald's. High in cholesterol. Yes, the yolk is high in cholesterol and it has fight, fat in it too, but it also has vitamin D. And actually your cholesterol will go up more from eating high fat than it will from eating shrimp and eggs, mm -hmm. foods that are high in cholesterol. It's actually eating more of the fat that's gonna cause your cholesterol to go up. Yeah, the saturated fats, yeah. So breakfast, I do some cottage cheese and fruit, but again, I eat it at the calf. You know what I mean, I don't eat it at home. So when I was eating at home, I would have to prep all those things in advance. Or on the, on the weekend, I'd make a bunch of scrambled eggs, you know, with whatever in it, and I'd have it all in the Tupperwares stacked up. So in the morning, I'd just throw it in my purse, and I'd have little Tupperwares of fruit, and throw it in my purse and be out the door so I can eat it at work. So, yeah. Breakfast is a hard one. You definitely have to prepare for it. Shakes don't do well for me. Does anybody do shakes in the morning? Any kind of protein shake? Yeah. So I usually drink it and then want to eat. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? It doesn't do that, fill me up. and Yeah, and then you get double. It's like two meals. Yeah. I need to, like, chew. <laughs> yeah, shakes don't work well for me. But a lot of people do it, and it works fine. So, yeah, breakfast is definitely the harder one. Does anybody meal prep? Ahead? Yeah. Yeah, makes life easier, huh? You don't have to cook every night. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your take on uh, vitamins? Do you encourage vitamins? Do you use a certain brand of vitamins? What do you? Um, so, you know, if you're eating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, you know, um, you may not need one, but I always kind of, it's like your insurance plan. Probably just take one anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's best if they have that USP symbol, like the Centrum or whatever. All of those are just fine. But then it covers you. Like right now, all of our vitamin D is low because it's been so cloudy and it's been winter. Our vitamin D is low right now, everybody's. So your metabolism is jacked right now. Your energy, you're probably more tired than usual. A lot of that's related to vitamin D. You know, we need that from the sun. That's the best source. So if we're supplementing it, yeah, we can kind of change that around a little bit. Yeah. So very picky eaters definitely take a vitamin. But I think, you know, I don't take one every day, but I take them often, I guess, yeah. 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 If you take so much, you know, the water soluble, has anybody ever taken like vitamin packs or these, you know, mega, and then your urine looks like a highlighter, mm -hmm. looks like neon? Yeah. You're just peeing out your vitamins. Those are the water soluble ones. So you got more, your body was like, hey, I have enough, let's get rid of the rest of this. Because they're water soluble, you just pee them all out. So it's, <laughs> so you have expensive urine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's just mega vitamin C. Last week I was starting to feel sick, so I went and did a couple of those real fast. Because vitamin C will help kind of build your immunity. So it's better to get it before you even get sick, but if you feel something coming on, but I mean oranges, I mean there's all kinds of vitamin C, but that emergency. I'd never done it, but I didn't get sick. I turned it around. Yeah, yeah, I did. That and hot tea, and I don't even like hot tea, but it's so full of antioxidants. I do that with honey, and I didn't get sick. I didn't get this whole thing that everybody's got right now. So... I don't know if it was because of that, but that's what I'm, I'm claiming. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I'm claiming that. <laughs> that's what it was <laughs> that fought it for me. So any other questions? It's easy to do to turn your health around with exercise is medicine and food is medicine. That's what we preach so much at the heart hospital. So all the control is in you. You can make choices. So you don't have to fall victim to always just taking more medicine and more pills and stuff. So. All right. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Uh -huh. okay. I know that several of you were taking pictures of the slides. I just want you to know that it will be available on our City of Little Rock Wealth um, YouTube page, and then it'll also be available on our Facebook page, Sitting on the Moon. So kind of look forward if you want to get the presentation and share it with other people.
We thank you for oh, yeah. such an entertaining and oh. informative <laughs> uh, training. We truly do appreciate it. Oh, so yeah. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Yeah.